Hello and welcome to TR Physics and today I'm going to talk about the Schwarzschild radius. Now the Schwarzschild radius is a criteria that must be met by an object or a core of a star to become a black hole. And it all comes from gravitational fields and escape velocity. You see, cores of stars are very high in mass and normally very small. And this means the gravitational field strength between them is actually quite high. So if I actually look at this now, if I look at Newton's law of gravitation, if I had a very, very small mass, so the radius from the centre of it to the surface was very small, and the mass was very, very high, my force of gravitation would be very, very strong. And this means that there must be a point where the gravitational field is so strong that I actually need to be moving faster than the speed of light to escape it. And this is what's known as the Schwarzschild radius. If a, it is a point where a star must shrink to, to mean that the escape velocity is the speed of light. I'm gonna derive the formula for you now. And it comes from gravitational fields. So if I'm trying to work out to leave, I'm trying to leave the field at the speed of light, I know I'm going to have to put in kinetic energy. So I'm going to find this point where I have a potential, a gravitational potential, which is energy over mass. Where well, this here is the mass of the object leaving. And this is the energy to leave with. And this ratio is the gravitational potential of the object. I also know I can work out the gravitational potential of an object's field at a point using this formula here. Okay. This negative sign, what it tells me is that the energy must be put in. I must actually put energy because the fields are attractive. I'm going to ignore that sign today because I'm not interested in it because I already know that I have to add the energy. This big M, of course, is the object causing the field. So the type of energy I'm going to be putting in is kinetic. So I'm going to say a half m v squared over m is my potential. The m's cancel. So I know that a half v squared is potential. Do you see that I put my v's differently just because I don't want to get confused? So I know the potential at any point in the field is this. So I'm going to have a half v squared is g m over r. And we are talking about a limit. I'm talking about the point where not even light can escape. I cannot go faster than the speed of light. So I'm going to say that this V equals the speed of light. So I have a half V squared, oops, C squared, equals G M over R. So I have R equals 2 G M over oh, uh, c squared. That is the formula for the Schwarzschild radius. Okay. Now this is actually quite a useful formula to know because technically the formula for escape velocity is on, isn't on your um, data sheet. But this is. So you can actually use this in gravitational field for escape velocity. So this V here is the escape velocity. Okay. So this R is the distance from the centre of the mass to the object that I must be to be able to, uh, my escape velocity is the speed of light. So if you can imagine, here's my star, this here is the Schwarzschild radius, um, so this is the what we call the event horizon. This side, if I wanted to leave the gravitational field there, my velocity would have to be less than the speed of light. On this side, my velocity has to be greater than the speed of light. 
and here my velocity is equal to the speed of light. So this Schwarzschild radius is the smallest that a star would have to be. So I would be at the surface of it. If the star was this big at this Schwarzschild radius, I would be at the surface of the star. This is the smallest it would have to be for me to be moving at the speed of light to leave it. If it shrunk any smaller than that, here, if the surface of it was much smaller than that, if I was at the surface of that star, I would need a speed that was bigger than the speed of light. So this line here is known as the event horizon. This is the Schwarzschild radius away from the star itself. So a black hole only forms if the core has shrunk far enough to actually meet the Schwarzschild radius. If it hasn't shrunk far enough to be the Schwarzschild radius, it will probably be a neutron star. This three solar masses that is touted as the limit, uh, sort of like it has to be bigger than three solar masses, is they've worked that out because the three solar masses, the core being three solar masses, means that it has enough gravitational force to contract enough to meet its own Schwarzschild radius. So let me give you an example of using this formula with our own sun. So, the, ra the Schwarzschild radius of our sun So 2 times g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times by the mass of our sun, which is 1.99 times 10 to the 30, over 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. So let's actually do this here. Grab a calculator. There it is. Wrong calculator. So 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times by 1.99 times 10 to the 30, divided by 3 times 10 to the 8 squared is 2918.7 meters. So our star would need to collapse, the core would need to collapse to a radius of about two, about almost three kilometers. If it did that, it would be able to become a black hole. But the problem is, is there's not enough mass in it to allow it to collapse to that far. Which means that to be a star that has enough gravitational force to pull it in to its Schwarzschild radius, it's going to have to be a huge star. Thus, not only does the star have to be bigger than eight solar masses to even go to a red supergiant and supernova, the core itself has to be bigger than three solar masses to even think about becoming a black hole. So that there is the Schwarzschild radius, and a very good recap on gravitational fields.